Okay guys, we first of all have the Insurmountable Skullfort Titan Helmet, Intellect, Strength of 48 and 49 max. This is uh, generally quite low. Now, with it, however, through infusion, you can actually make this quite a bit higher. Although, it's going to take you a very tricky amount of time to actually get it up there. Now let's get into the perks. We first of all have improved transfusion. Kills with Stormfist immediately trigger health regeneration, respawn with full melee energy, and gain a second melee charge. Now, trans the way transfusion works in the striker subclass tree is it procs with shoulder charge. With an insurmountable skill for it, that does not happen. If you want shoulder charge to return health to you, you will not be able to do it with this helmet. You'll have to run transfusion in the subclass tree. Respawning with full melee energy and gaining a second melee charge, however, is pretty nice. We have increased intellect, increased strength. We have hands-on, gain bonus super energy from melee kills on minions of the darkness. We have heavy lifting, gain bonus super energy from heavy weapon kills on minions of the darkness. And finally, we have invigoration, gain bonus melee energy on orb pickups. We actually have a nice bit of synergy here when it comes to melee, you know? We have uh, quite a nice PvE-styled helmet here. Uh, invigoration, gaining bonus melee energy on orb pickups, having a double melee charge is really nice. Also, having hands-on to gain bonus super energy from it means you'll be getting to use your Fist of Havoc a little bit quicker every now and again. And, well, as it goes, it's a little bit tricky to have... This helmet was actually kind of okay in the Dark Below, but nowadays it's not so common. Most Titans these days are going to be using things like... Uh, Ruin Wings and the Armamentarium. But anyway, let's move on to the Hunter Helmet. We have the Acleophage Symbiote. Intellect of 82. This is uh, kind of the low end of top tier stats. And of course we have... The, f the nostalgia of the Acleophage Symbiote to make this helmet a little bit better. But anyway, let's get into perks. We first of all have a very sexy shader there. Last Man Standing, Golden Gun gains one additional shot per use. This uh, actually has a reduced duration now. I believe it's about 10% shorter now, the, the uh, actual meter of the super when, you're, when it's active. So getting the four shots off can be tricky, but if you have the targets lined up, you will be more or less okay as long as your aim is true. Now. I'm not sure if I want this, actually. <laughs> I'm tempted, but anyway. We'll, uh, real quick, just get into all the perks. We have Increase Strength, Increase Intellect. Ashes to Asset, gain bonus super energy on grenade kills. We have something that's taking a long time to show up. I'm recording over this, and I thought this was shorter. <laughs> Hurry up. What was I doing during this? <laughs> so how are y'all doing? There we go. Second thoughts. Gain bonus super energy from special weapon kills on minions of the darkness. So we have a nice little PvE, PvP sort of base here. And finally we have innervation. Bonus grenade energy on orb pickup. So we have a nice combo with ashes to assets and innervation in PvP. Getting a grenade kill, popping the super off a little bit faster really nice, but I would recommend trying to roll for something with Discipline using the Twist Fate node. Just that way you can try and proc Ashes to Asset and Innovation that a little bit more often. Personally, I like this helmet. I really want it, but I'm not sure about it. I might buy two and uh, probably go for it. In fact, I don't know why I'm saying that, because I did buy two. <laughs> And I bought some glass needles as well, but <laughs> I'm pretty bad with this whole commentary thing. I know um, if you got advice, feel free to let me know. But now we are going to move on to the Warlock chest piece this time around. Heart of the Praxic Fire. Intellect and Discipline, 63 and 62. This is pretty good. And as with all, you know, all the other armors, it, with Infusion, you can make the Intellect and Discipline a hell of a lot higher. So let's uh, real quick get into all of the stats and perks in this thing, and then I'll give you my opinion on this chess piece, because I love it. 
We first of all have Praise the Sun, further decreases all ability cooldowns while Radiance is active, greatly increased agility. This is amazing in PvE and PvP. If you spec um, something like Tier 3 Discipline and Strength, you'll get your grenades and melees back in just under 10 seconds. If you have it at uh, Tier 5, which is probably going to be only one or the other, you'll get the grenade back in 5 seconds at the most. In Mayhem, they're just back immediately. There's nothing stopping it. <laughs> These are just really strong. Running Firebolt nades with, uh, you know, burn damage is amazing. We also have Increased Intellect, Discipline, Fusion Rifle, Ammo, Hand Cannon, Ammo. A lot of last words lately, so this is going to be something you'll see often. <laughs> we have Solar Burn Defense, reduces incoming Solar Burn damage. And this actually procs in PvP. You can uh, actually take a Fusion Grenade and live through it. If you can run away quick enough afterwards, because you're going to have literally no health, you should be okay. And finally we have Solar Armor, increasing armor when using the solar-based subclass. So this has a perfect synergy with the Sunsinger itself. And th this armor is pretty much the generic with this piece of armor right here. It's a fantastic chest piece. I per prefer picking this one up first. Now let's get into the one. Hard Light. <laughs> what can I say? It's a very beautiful auto rifle that came out in the Vanilla Destiny. This gun used to be a little bit awful. High rate of fire, low impact, great and all that, but the range doesn't matter. We'll get into that now with Volatile Light. Rounds fired from this weapon have no damage fall off, so range is no object. Overpenetrate targets and ricochet off hard surfaces. So we have armor piercing rounds and skip rounds. The sk now, skip rounds in a general sense don't work all that well. However, uh, on the hard light, they're knocking fucks. <laughs> they are just absolutely crazy. If you get a nice little choke point going, like a tunnel on uh, the drifter, you can go to town. <laughs> and I really mean it. You will go absolutely nuts with this sort of thing. Now, we're going to go into some of the optional perks here. We have quick draw, increasing the uh, draw speed of the weapon. Uh, to low to actually less than one full second, which is absolutely fantastic. We have fitted stock to increase the weapon stability, and something to note is when you run fitted stock with CQB ballistics, you will have maximum stability, which is fantastic to use. Now, finally, we have glass half full and spray and play. Spray and play and fitted stock are very nice synergy for PVE. Spray and play is probably the one I prefer for you, for PVE in general, whereas. Uh, Glass half full, I'm going to be using that in PvP. My personal recommendations here is quick draw spray and play for PvE, and quick draw with glass half full in PvP, or fitted stock with glass half full in PvP. Quick draw is one of those perks where you can use it in PvE or PvP, and it will be just fine. You know, there's nothing for you to really worry about with this weapon. It's a very good auto rifle now. And finally, we have the Legacy Engram. Special Weapon Engram, we've had this so many times. For the record, this can drop um, Prison of Elders weapons as well. So, Queen Breaker's Bow, the Lord of Wolves, uh, Drake's Promise, you will be able to get those no problem. And I'm actually surprised we keep getting Special Weapon Engrams. Maybe there's a bug in Zur, I don't know. But uh, I would love to see helmets, we more weapons. I'd love to see boots again, too. <laughs> Now let's get into uh, the curios real quick. We have the Plasma Drive, permanently upgrades and equipped Rare Sparrows to improve overall speed and durability. What this means in layman's terms is makes your Rare Sparrow legendary. And we have the Void Drive, same basic concept, making a Rare Sparrow into a legendary Sparrow. We have Heavy Ammo Synthesis, three Heavy Ammo Boxes for one Strange Coin. We now have the Three of Coins, five Three of Coins for seven Strange Coins. Uh, this is the best way to farm exotics, and I'm a, I, yeah, I got some here. <laughs> and we have the Glass Needles to re-roll exotic gear. And I'm actually going to experiment with these a little bit, because uh, as you can see here, I did actually buy the Accolade Fate Symbiote, and one was to re-roll and one was to just keep. <laughs> and finally, we have the Mode of Light Exchange, two Strange Coins for a single Mode of Light. 
Now, something I think, I've spoken about this to a lot, and I mean a lot of people, is that we need another exchange here. Strain, like, one mode of light for one strange coin. Like, let's say you uh, put in two strange coins and one mode of light and you didn't mean to. You can turn in that mode and get one coin back. I think that's a fair trade, you know what I mean? I think that's a really good deal. That's personally just something I want to see in there. I, it probably won't ever happen, but who knows. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of this whole commentary thing, because I'm a little bit new to it, and, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the review. And I will see you, Guardians, in the Crucible. You might even see me with a hard light and an Acclifate symbiote. <laughs> anyway, bye-bye.